Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Q3 FI19 earnings call of Ujivan Financial Services. Representing Ujivan Financial Services, we have with us Mr. Itara Davis, MD and CEO, and Mr. Deepak Khaitan, CFO and IR. From Ujivan Small Finance Bank, we have with us Mr. Samit Ghosh, MD and CEO, Mr. Sanjay Kau, Chief Business Officer, Ms. Upma Goyal, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Rajat Singh, who is the Business Head for Micro Banking and Personal Loan, Mr. Mulli Manohar, who is the National Manager for Financial Planning and Analysis, and Ms. Neha Thakur, who is the Head of Credit and Collections for the Micro Banking piece. I would now request Mr. Ghosh to take us through the key highlights for the quarter, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening and welcome to our third earnings call for the financial year 2019. Uh, the third quarter marks significant improvement in our business, both on the liability as well as on the asset side. This is in line with our business plan. Our disbursements were two, uh, 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 rupees 2885 crores, up 21% quarter and quarter. This led to gross loan book growth of 12% quarter and quarter to uh, rupees 9349 crores. Microbanking vertical has shown good traction with disbursement growth of 17% versus the previous quarter. This is in line with what we have been mentioning over the last two calls and the result of a number of new initiatives undertaken by our microbanking team. Micro and small business, affordable housing, rural banking have all been ramping up rapidly. Financial Institutions Group now has a book of 100 crores with 75 crores disbursed in this quarter. We expect this to ramp up uh, in the next quarter, uh, the current quarter. This is also our effort to support the well-managed NBFCs during this challenging period. We opened 97 branches in the quarter, taking our branch network to 464 and are fully compliant with the RBI requirement of 25% banking outlets in unbanked rural centers. We have 10 more branches to be opened in the fourth quarter. We have, will have about 49 asset centers to be converted to bank branches in the next financial year. All our converted banking outlets and even our rural branches are showing impressive traction in retail deposit. Our liquidity position is comfortable as we have brought down the dependence in the CD market from 29% at the beginning of the year to around 10%. And high cost term borrowings inherited from the NBFC period is now down from 16% to 2% uh, as a percentage of the total borrowing. We replace the CD borrowings by long term refinance facilities, retail and wholesale deposits. This has significantly improved our asset liability management position by replacing short term funds with long term refinance facilities and term deposits. We plan to raise $50 million, $50 million equivalent in rupees in tier 2 capital in this quarter from IFC, which will further strengthen our balance sheet. The MSC business asset under management grew 28% quarter and quarter. Increased focus is on secured sourcing, which now constitutes 80% plus of the quarter's disbursement. Our ticket size are going up, while the yields are moving down. Affordable housing segment also has shown a healthy progress of 25% quarter and quarter growth in AUM. Rural business, which was launched this year, has shown an impressive initial growth in assets and liabilities. With network of 117 rural branches, we expect this business to grow at a rapid scale. Over, overall, our asset business has been moving in the right direction, and we are all set to achieve 30, 30, 30 to 35% growth in this financial year. <clears throat> we continue to improve our retail deposit business driven by expansion of our branches and opening up of new channels like multilingual mobile banking app. Retail deposits stand at 36% and CASA ratio is at 10%. So we have opened 10 lakh savings accounts for our micro banking customers this year, of which 4 lakhs were added in the third quarter. We added 1.4 lakh new bank deposit customers this year, of whom about 60,000 were added in the last quarter. This year, we aim to convert around half of our microbanking borrowers as banking customers. 
We are also introducing an advanced version of corporate internet banking to service medium-sized companies and institutions. For the year, we plan to cover 65 to 70 percent of the total assets by deposits, of which retail would be about one-third. Our customer growth, which was stagnant in the first two quarters, has started to move upwards. We have 43.7 lakh unique customers, which is a growth of 2.1 lakh during the year. 1.7 lakh increment was made in the last quarter. This has come largely from our asset customers. Our net profit has been steady as per our forecast at rupees 45.2 crores. Our cost to income ratio is at 77.7, is marginally higher than the last quarter. We expect this to start declining with the completion of the big spurt of our branch conversion and scaling up of our businesses. We have evaluated multiple options of listing the bank by January 2020 and dilution of the promoter's holding to 40% by January 2022 as required by RBI. We have consulted with a number of bankers, legal counsel and tax experts over the last two months. These have been reviewed by both our boards, keeping in mind the interest of the shareholders, uh, tax and stamp duty impact, and all the compliance and other regulatory aspects. We have arrived at a couple of options, both of which require regulatory and legal approvals from RBI, SEBI, and NCLT. Details of the final roadmap will be provided after receiving these approvals. The board of the bank and the holding company has completed the process of identifying three candidates for the new MD and CEO. We'll submit our application to RBI by end of this month for their approval. Overall, our business and financial performance has been good and on track. We have made substantial progress in the areas of meeting regulatory requirements. We look forward to a strong last quarter in line with our performance in the third quarter. And with this, I would like to hand over to Kitira Davis to take you through further details of the financials of Ujiva. Thank you. Thank you, Shamat. It's almost two years since the bank commenced operations. Our building phase is almost done. The seeds of growth planted uh, over the period are now showing some green shoots. The numbers for the last quarter, which I've shared with you, provide that confirmation. Business growth, credit quality, NIM, and other business numbers show the all-round strength of the bank. From this quarter onwards, the cost-income ratio will also show improvement. Which even is now well set to move to the growth phase. Some of the numbers that I'd like to just highlight very quickly, the overall disbursements are up 27%. Gross AUM up 32%, net interest income for the bank up 34%, NIM for the bank is 10.8 for the nine months of the financial year, and 11.5 for the consolidated entity. Consolidated profits for the uh, quarter is 45.2 crores. Capital adequacy is at 22.2, and as we said before, the number of branches have uh, completed are 464. The asset quality is very robust with the GNPA at 1.4% and the NNPA at 0.3%. And the provision coverage ratio stands at 81%. Uh, I will not go into very much more of the numbers, but I will stop here and give you some more time for the questions. Before I hand you over, I'd like to thank uh, the Access Capital team for hosting this interaction. Now over to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the attached on phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to limit their questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for a follow-up. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Manisha Swal from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, very steady uh, performance given the context of the quarter. Uh, first question on the uh, uh, growth of the balance sheet growth, which is uh, quite strong, and uh, 
secondly uh, given the liquidity scenario given the liquidity scenario in the sector do you see uh, some uh, pressure on the disbursement the incremental uh, coming quarters and secondly uh, um, mfi segment uh, some of the states have uh, announced a loan waiver so do you see any impact of the uh, higher delinquency in those states so uh, from a liquidity point of view we have uh, no issues at all you know i mean we have sufficient funding and we've been able to replace as i mentioned in my uh, introduction a uh, lot of the short term funding through largely through uh refinance facilities and our growth of our deposit business a lot of which is term deposit we also are going to raise uh, 50 million dollars worth of book fee uh, uh, you know tier to capital in this quarter so liquidity is not an issue with us i mean to the extent that as i mentioned we are out supporting uh, a lot of the good ncfcs uh, by providing the funding uh, uh, we have done that in the last quarter and we can intend to continue doing in the next two quarters uh, as far as the portfolio quality problem uh, is concerned with uh, you know this uh, announcement of loan waivers etc uh, i'll request rajat to speak to you about it he can explain to you in more detail so uh, overall in terms of uh, impact of loan waiver on our portfolio quality impact has been minimal so far we are seeing some uh, some challenges in select pocket of mp but given our portfolio is very small there and largely it's urban and semi urban portfolio uh, we are not very largely impacted because of that apart from mp at, at this moment there is no other problem related to loan waiver in our portfolio okay uh, secondly on the on the issue of this listing of uh, given small finance bank said at the time of giving license uh, the rbi had given license to 10 sfb and including ujivan so the the uh, the condition which now uh, uh, is, uh, is that uh, they have to list their uh, within the 3 years in that case there are so many other nbfc uh, sfb they are not uh, doing very well so i mean uh, is there any possibility of election on this front or uh, this is the now the uh, done case and we have to list uh, by 2020 so uh, i mean uh, rbi has made it quite clear that uh, we have to list by Uh, latest by february 2020 so that means we have to complete the listing process by january we are looking at uh, multiple options you know uh, for that in, in, uh, we spent the last two months actually a uh, lot of time with bankers and uh, tax consultants and uh, your uh, legal advisors and we reduced it to two or three options uh by which uh, you know we can achieve this uh, there are two aspects of it one is listing and also dilution of the promoter shareholding uh to 40% in 3 years time uh so sorry 5 years time uh so the, we will uh, be approaching uh, these all require regulatory approvals so we will be approaching both rbi and sebi and if necessary and clt uh you know the, for these approvals and once we have these approvals we can come back to you but uh, the way it stands uh, you know rbi requires us to list but there are various options the various ways to list uh, uh list the bank uh, those are what we are exploring sure sure sir and last small uh, data point sorry to interrupt maybe request you to come back in queue for follow up thank you the next question is from the line of alok shah from centrum broking please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity sir and uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers i was specifically looking at the slide 23 of our presentation and what excites me is this deposit customers and new to bank deposit customers so if you could help understand you know how this transition has happened you know adding a 5 lakh customer base quarter on quarter or even a 0.6 uh, lakh customer new to bank deposit so what is being a strategy there and also uh, what's the average deposit ticket size that we're looking at in this bucket Sorry could you repeat which slide are you talking about slide 23 of a presentation i think this is the first time we have put out this so customer base growth right right okay okay so this is an interesting slide sir uh, you know i'm pretty impressed with the numbers that we see here uh, just trying to understand how this number has uh, shaped up and what's the average deposit size that we talk about in this 
Okay. Uh, so uh, you see our deposit customer base has increased almost by 5 lakhs. Bulk of this increase has come from micro banking segment. And in the third line, we have mentioned what is the customer base addition in branch banking, new to bank deposit customer. That's close to 2.3 lakhs. So in the open market, which is branch banking, our deposit uh, average deposit for the savings account is close to 7,500, 8,000 rupees. And for micro banking customer, our average deposit base is close to 2,000 rupees, 2,000, 2,500 rupees. So that is the average. Also from, uh, if you look at the it same slide, what you will realize is that 40% of our asset customers have a deposit with us. So from a strategic perspective, we have open every time we take, give a repeat loan, we, uh, uh, we do the disbursement into an account. So a person opens the account and we do a disbursement into that account. So there is, at the end of about one month, there is still about 8 to 10 percent which is, remains there and progressively depletes. But that also instigates the customer to start using the account, which is where it has us to build a 40 percent penetration into the 41 percent penetration of the asset book. And of course, in the deposit, it's, it's an open market strategy which has led us to build 2.3 lakhs, and we are doing a lot of embellishment on that strategy to grow that even further. Sure, yeah, because when I look at this ratio, uh, to, in September quarter you had 8.5 lakh uh, customers with asset and liability both on a base of 42, 42 lakh customer base, which is 20%. And that number goes to 29-30% in, in one quarter. Uh, so, you know, to what you said, there is some amount which stays in their account. To add to it, we have had new client additions as well. Yeah. Is that the right way of looking at it? Also, okay. the branches are being opened. You know, yeah. we are opening new. Uh, the conversions which have started taking place picked up steam in the second and third quarter. So that has also helped in that process. So how do we look at this number, say in March 19 or maybe by March 20? I mean, I think you did talk about something like converting 65 to 70 percent of your assets into deposit customers as well. So you know, we are looking at almost about. 55% to 60% of our customers, of our asset customers holding uh, uh, holding a deposit account. By March 19. Okay, so that's right. In addition to the open market growth. Right, okay. Okay, sure. That is my first question to you, sir. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I'll come back to the queue, sir. Thank you. I'll come back. Thank you. Okay, well, I'll the next question is from the line of Sunil Kothari from Unique Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Sir, uh, my question is uh, related to cost to income ratio. Since I mean, uh, listing, uh, we we had some vision, we have some plan. We we were talking about uh, reaching near 50 percent. So, where we stand there, and how you see this changing over next three years? Uh, how why it is so late and why, by what way we'll be changing to those type of ratios? This cost to income ratio of 77%, if we compare this with, say, Bandhan Bank, it is 33%. So, where we stand and what's your thought process? Uh, so, ratio which is currently at 77%, uh, as you all know, we are in the process of converting our asset branches into the uh, full fledged banking units. So this year we were expecting the cost to income ratio to remain in the range of 75%. But with our growth, we are expecting our cost to income ratio to reach uh, to the level of 50 to 55% in the next three to four years. Okay. And for that, uh, the major uh, driver will be growth. Growth yeah. as well as the cost controls measures which we are being uh, already institutionalized from this quarter. Largely, it will be from scaling up the business. You are right. And so my last question is this, uh, the, whatever basic uh, cost structure, fixed cost structure we supposed to already establish or uh, yet we require to be uh, adding many people and many branches, How? what's your uh, guidance about that? So on the fixed side, I mean we have already uh, as of December end, we have 464 branches which are the full-fledged bank, branch banking uh, we have and another 10 branches we will add up in the next quarter. So from that perspective, fixed cost uh, we had already, uh, there is no major increase we are looking at from the uh, next quarter onwards. Okay. Thank you very much. Wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you.
Next question is from the line of Venkat Subramanian from Organic Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, in the opening remark, Mr. Ghosh uh, indicated that uh, ticket sizes are going up and uh, yields are coming down. Uh, can you throw a little more light on that, please? So that uh, relates to mainly MSC business uh, because from in the MSC business, we are moving from unsecured business to secured portfolio. And the secured loans obviously have a lower interest rate and the loan sizes are larger. That's uh, only relating to MSC business. It doesn't really, that comment doesn't, uh, is not for the other businesses. Does it have any reflection on our uh, names uh, going forward? Uh, on the MSE, the names would... Uh, blended, I would say. Blended? On a blended basis? Yeah, on a blended basis. See, currently our portfolio is 82% secured and uh, 18% unsecured. Progressively, the, uh, the portfolio will come close to about 90% secured. So, the current names will be will deteriorate by about you know, 100 basis points, but that will be more than made up by the uh, fair loss, reduction in the loss number that we will have over time. Right. Uh, my second question is uh, with respect to the number of retail customers that we have taken, uh, the number of retail customers that we have taken, uh, given that, uh, you know, we have such small ticket uh, customers, uh, what would be the cost of servicing them and uh, what can be the potential payoff going forward? I would guess that at this point in time, they are not contributing big with respect to your, uh, your, your, uh, uh, you know, real saving really there. So uh, the thing is, you know, I mean, these uh, microfinance customers, uh, their uh, deposit levels are relatively small at present. But uh, the, we open their account more also from the perspective of uh, efficiency, so that we can. Uh, disburse our ca loans into their accounts cashless and we are working also to re uh, select on a cashless way through standing instructions, etc. So this, uh, this has not only the impact, is also in terms of reducing our operating cost in the future. But we are also going to introduce from the next quarter what we call family banking because we feel that these microfinance customers as a family, uh, have uh, significant savings. You know, I mean, uh, it can range anywhere between 15,000 to 1 lakh. So if we would be able to attract them through other pro deposit products like recurring deposit or fixed deposit, etc. So overall relationship with the customer, uh, both from the liability side and from the asset side, is extremely profitable. Right, sir. And uh, lastly, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. May we request you to come back in queue for follow up? Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishan Shah from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, just one question. Uh, could you speak about the discipline in the group center meetings and uh, any trends over there? Like, I think the last I spoke, you said you are trying to uh, show up that discipline. So, any, any comments about how that has changed? So, uh, you are asking about center meeting discipline? Yes. Yeah, so in some pocket, uh, some specific states, especially in Maharashtra, we, we were seeing that trend. Uh, we have started working on, uh, I mean, very structured way, we have started working on bringing that central meeting discipline. Lot of policy changes have also been instituted. So we are seeing positive trend, and it has also helped us in improving our on-time repayment rate. So we are seeing positive traction already. Yeah, uh, Rajat, you just uh, mention some of these policies, like what else are you doing? So, for example, uh, customer getting next loan delayed uh, after three or four delayed payments, we have tightened those uh, policies so that customers who are delaying our loan beyond a particular uh, uh, point are not getting the repeat loan. We are constantly going and communicating them that if they don't pay on time and come to center meeting, there will they'll be a repercussion on their next loan. Sure. And uh, could you just broadly quantify, like, uh, how the attendance rates have moved? Like, I think it was closer to 50% or so. Like, has that improved and how much has that improved by? The attendance is more or less in the same range, but the collection at the center meeting has improved. So, at present, our on-time repayment rates are over 91%, and uh, we expect this to gradually improve over the next few months with all the uh, uh, measures we have taken. Okay. So, yes, that's it from me. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Murarka from India Infoline. Please go ahead. Hello. 
Yeah, go ahead. Hi, go ahead. Yeah, good evening and congratulations for the quarter. So Thank I have uh, three questions. <clears throat> One is, if I look at the numbers you have reported, uh, your yields have moved up by 100 basis points YOY. Your costs have come down by 80 basis points YOY. But the NIM that you have reported is flat. Uh, so just, uh, you know, just help me reconcile this. Um, the second uh, question is, uh, you know, with respect to your branch opening, so we know what the conversion plans are, that's fine. But apart from the conversion, uh, what is your branch addition plan and hiring plan for the next year or a couple of years, if you can share that? Uh, and the third thing is, uh, in MSE, if I look at the net NPA ratio, that has been going up and that has almost hit, I think, 1% uh, in the quarter. Uh, now, if I look at the MSE book, it's not only growing fast, but incrementally, as you said, it's also go, uh, growing through unsecured, uh, sorry, secured uh, loans. So why is this NNPA ratio going up? So these are three questions. Thanks. Uh, okay, let me uh, let me take uh, your question two first, uh, which is on the branch expansion. Uh, sure. We have plans to expand our branch. First of all, we will convert. We have 48 asset centers which are still to be converted, which yes. we will convert in uh, in the within the first half of next year. And we have plans to grow branches further. Which, for which we are doing our surveys, which we do our internal surveys area surveys to determine which branch, branches that would, those would be. And, but it's not going to be in the same measure as it has been in this year. But any number that you can share or you have in mind? Uh, nothing, uh, no, not till we've completed our surveys. Once we've completed our surveys, we will be able to share the numbers with you. Okay, and hiring? Yeah, yeah, I think much lower. Much lower than this year. So, Abhishek, we have opened close to 300 branches this year. Next year, that number will be substantially lower than that. That's all we can tell you at this moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay, on the MSC book, yeah. uh, we realized very quickly that we had certain challenges in the unsecured book for which we had, uh, and, and that's when we start strategically changed the whole move to bring in secured loans and do more of secured loans. Uh, in fact, uh, like I said earlier, progressively, almost close to 90% of our flows are in the secured book. Yeah. The unsecured book obviously depleting, so to the extent that the secured book is going up, the unsecured book is coming down as well, and that, that combined impact is showing a higher NPA, but, you know, uh, there are certain uh, there are certain uh, actions that we've taken because on account of which we will the numbers will start coming down in in the next two quarters. So this uh, increase in NNPA is uh, on account of uh, some increase in delinquencies in the unsecured book, like uh, Mr. Sanjay has mentioned. And uh, when an account enters into an NPA, we do not take 100% uh, provisioning immediately. So the provisioning will increase as. Uh, the buckets uh, change and move for different accounts, and that's the reason you see the spike in Q3 in terms of the NNPA percentage. So has the GNPA also gone up in percentage terms? That's, or is it just the PCR dropping which is creating this NNPA to go up? No, see the PCR dropping uh, has uh, been on account of uh, the write-off we have done on the micro banking book, and uh, it's. The MSC book will have no bearing on the PCR given the size of the portfolio we have at this point in time. So the unsecured book has some uh, increase in the uh, uh, GNP and that's the reason why you see that spike in NNP. Okay. Uh, yeah. And finally about the NIM. Uh... So uh, when we look into the NIMs, our uh, yields are at 20.5. I'm now talking about the bank NIM. It's 20.1, which was there in Q2, and uh, we have the same yield in Q3. Uh, similar is the situation for the cost of funds. Our cost of funds were 8.5 in Q2, and in Q3 also we had 8.5. So our bank names are stable at 10.8%. Uh, for the consolidated name, uh, I will request Deepak to answer this. Abhishek, there is a difference in how you calculate bank name and... Uh NBFC name because in bank name you have a processing fee which is taken as other income whereas in NBFC it is included in your uh, uh, interest earned calculation. I can give you the details of line. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's let's take that offline. No problem. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Digantharia from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, my question is related to our branch banking. Uh, if you can just highlight what are the top two or three things now uh, for us at our branches, uh, because now I think most of the rollout is over, most of the operating costs have been taken. So what would be the top two things that we would focus on at the branches for, say, next four or five quarters? Okay, so our primary focus in the branch banking area is to be, is to uh, increase CASA. And we are, and strategically, we are going through a segment-based, solution-based strategy to do that. And that is what we will continue to do as we continue to embellish our products. So we will, we will go to uh, segments, provide a wholesome solution, a holistic solution to that segment, while also embellishing our CASA product. And FD, we will, on the FD, our strategy will continue to be, uh, to have a higher than what competition is offering, uh, the, the private banks, et cetera, that they offer, to be able to gain foothold in the segment. Then you can uh, mention about the corporate internet banking. And yeah, okay. So, uh, the, so the, some of the new additions that we've had is on the, on the CASA, on the current account product, we've added a corporate internet banking uh, module which a lot of our customers and the medium size amongst the medium sized companies ask for and that that is some that's that's an addition that we've done in this quarter in addition we've also brought in a cash management solution which is yet another requirement of these companies and both are, both these are in our in our uh, uh, is a differentiator that we have with the uh, with this uh, car product on the savings account we have a whole bunch of things that uh, we are doing with the with the debit cards, with uh, with the UPI, the entire payment uh, aspect of the savings account, which again is something where is is what you build the entire transaction through in the savings account. And we've seen wherever transactions have gone up, we've seen a build in terms of the savings uh, the savings that they keep with us, the balances that they keep with us. Yeah. In addition, we've also given our customers customer base. We have a mobile app which is in five languages, and uh, that is something that that again is something that we are promoting because it becomes much easier for our customers to be able to transact in a language that they know well, as opposed to this one being just in English. Yeah, and in, and plus we've had a, a fair amount of marketing that we've done, and you know all our marketing that we do happens in the regional languages and, and the mobile app is one of the key things that we've marketed in the markets that we've gone in, the languages that we've gone with. And the languages that we have are English, Hindi. Hindi covers a, a very large range of uh, our states, uh, Bengali, uh, Tamil and Kannada. Uh, okay, okay, thanks. That's that. Thanks for this elaborate ex explanation. Just a fo last follow-up to that is, uh, that, that you know, in in uh, our SA account, why don't we offer uh, better interest rates, uh, like, you know, maybe as high as, say, 6%, 7%, because some of our competitors are, one, trying to do that. Uh, so that's the first part. And second part is that right now, per branch, if I look at your CASA deposits plus retail term deposits, we are roughly sitting at around 4.5 to 5 crores of deposit per branch. And on the very, very higher end of this, we have large private banks sitting at 150 crores of deposits per branch. So where do we want to, uh, you know, go, say, in the next one or two years? What is our internal aspiration or target on this particular thing? Okay, so our belief is, like I said uh, earlier, our belief is that we go to segments and we go through a holistic solution uh, to those segments. And we believe that a relationship counts for far more than just rates and the service that we provide is a key differentiator there as also whatever we've done in our products as I spoke about. So that is going to be the way we will drive both our car and our SaaS strategies. As, as, as regards the branches, yes, four and a half crores is the average at the moment, but if we look at the vintages, progressively there are a large number, as the vintages have been growing, a large number of our, uh, of our branches have been have been, uh, you know, their, their balances have grown and we are currently tracking at levels of, because, you know, look at it from a vintage perspective, most of our branches have been at about nine, ten months as opposed to other banks, private banks, which have been there for many years. So at this stage, we are looking at tractions, you know, of going from 10 to 25 and so on. So, you know, we have a large number of branches that are well on, on the way to achieve those 
those kind of balances. Okay. All right. Thank you. All the best, and thanks for this explanation. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhawal Gada from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, most of the questions have been answered. Just a few data keeping questions. Uh, one, uh, what is the breakdown of uh, interest income between uh, advances and uh, investment income and any other interest income? Uh, second is the breakdown between uh, ca uh, current account and uh, saving account. And the third is uh, the breakdown of the uh, fee income between processing fee, PSLC, and any other fee income and treasury gain. Uh, Dawa, you can take down the numbers. Yeah. For December 2000, uh, for the Q3 FY19, processing fees is 30 crores. Okay. There's zero PSLC. Interest on investment is 26 crores. Okay. Securitization income is 3.6 crores. Okay. Red debt recovery is 5.3 crores. Fee income is 5.1 crore and miscellaneous income is 5.7 crores. Uh, sorry, how much was bad debt recovery? 5.3 crores. And after that, uh, the two numbers were? Fee income is 5.1 crore. Okay. And uh, miscellaneous is 5.7. Okay, got it. Okay, and uh, the breakdown between current account and saving account? Yeah. 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 So uh, currently our uh, car deposit is uh, close to 50 crores, okay. and uh, saving account deposit is uh, above 500, uh, 10 crores. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavik Dave from Reliance Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, hi, sir. Uh, just wanted to understand uh, the uh, firstly on your MFI business. So uh, like around 30, 40 percent of our business is in the top three states that we operate in. So just wanted to understand how are these three states operating? Because uh, not from an MFI, uh, from uh, from a from a state perspective, had gone through ups and downs. Like a Karnataka has gone through the uh, waiver. So, uh, which is 13 percent of our uh, business. So, how are these three states, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka, uh, behaving from a customer perspective and from a business perspective? Okay. So, uh, right now, all three of these states are quite stable. We are getting good amount of uh, growth coming. Uh, we have good amount of growth coming from Tamil Nadu, followed by West Bengal, and then Karnataka. In Karnataka, because it has gone through. A uh, little bit of uh, challenge in previous year. In Bangalore and urban area, we are a bit more careful and moving uh, towards semi-urban and rural area. Our portfolio in rest of the Karnataka is doing pretty well. In, uh, in uh, Tamil Nadu, we have, don't have any issue. Our recent origination uh, also in last uh, of last 15 to 18 months are also very, very stable. Industry-wise also, we are not seeing any challenges at this moment. Uh, and even in West Bengal, we are having the more or less similar situation. Very stable at this moment. Uh, there is no challenges uh, coming out in these three states. But how is the competition in, when it comes to West Bengal? Because we have a player which is, uh, uh, which is uh, quite sizable and has been a leader in West Bengal. So how do we uh, cope up with the competition with uh, likes of Vandan? So we have been competing with them for last 10 years. So I mean, while we compete in some geography, there are a lot of places where, I mean, where we are not present or where, I mean, our customers uh, do not overlap that much. At, even in West Bengal, close to one third of our customers are our unique customers. Uh, so, uh, and there are some customers, there are some bases where we share customers. So as far as uh, uh, competition is concerned, we don't have any problem. We are not seeding ground to them. And our growth in West Bengal has been above average. Uh, at this moment, we don't see any challenges. Actually, in fact, some of the smaller MFIs have slowed down a bit in West Bengal in last two, three months. And to that extent, we, are, uh, we have got some benefit. Sure. And uh, secondly, sir, on the MSC business, that we uh, I see that the average ticket sales have gone up over this quarter by 27-30% in the in one quarter. Uh, what is leading to this average ticket size going up, and how are how is this? Uh, who are these customers? Are these the MFI customers that have graduated from like the MFI to uh, secured kind of lending? What what is the color of this MSC loan that uh, we are doing? Who are these customers? How many customers do we have? And how did this ticket size increase so rapidly? Okay, so uh, if you look at the MSC flows, uh, almost uh, close to 85 to 90% of our flows are from the secured book now compared to what it was earlier. Right. So that, that, that explains why the ticket sizes have gone up. And uh, in terms of uh, these are all uh, not non-MFI customers. So these are new to, new to G1 customers, not from the MFI book. Okay.
and how do we source these customers are like are they, are they sourced via branches or uh, what have like how do so we we have we have a we have multiple channels that we source them through so one there is a, a large part of the sourcing happens through the direct team which is almost close to 75% another staff referrals would be another 10 to 15% then we also have started getting customer referrals also very small at the moment and uh, we have also tied up with connectors who are in the range of 5 to 10% so it's a it's a it's a combination of channels. And what led to this uh, jump in the I'm ticket? Sorry to interrupt, but maybe request you to come back in queue for any follow-ups. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitesh Jain from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, so on operating expense, how are we looking at the uh, growth uh, on the current base for next year? Will it be just inflationary 10-15% growth, or next year can be a higher growth on the uh, uh, this quarter quarterly run rate of 250 crores of opex? So uh, next year growth on the OPEX is also uh, will be directly linked with our uh, branches which we will be opening it up. So as we say, over a period of time, we will look into the cost to income ratio of 50 to 55 percent. But the OPEX will be uh, uh, in line with the expansion which we will be planning, which we are planning for the next year. Uh, so any ballpark number in terms of uh, growth, so if we look at this quarterly run rate, Broadly, the full year OPEX will be around 1,000 crores run rate. So on that, uh, uh, any ballpark uh, uh, growth that uh, one should expect? So we are in the process of finalizing our branch extensions for the next year. We will come back with the numbers in the Q4. Sure. And just uh, on, on the deposits, can you share the percentage of deposits that you have, you have got from microfinance customers? For microfinance customer, we have close to 380 crores of deposit, of, uh, and we have overall to total retail deposit of 2,000 crores. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Asim Pant from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, one question is on this recent uh, RBI circular on uh, allowing restructuring for MSME loans. Uh, have you done any analysis on uh, if and how much of your portfolio would be eligible for that? So right now, uh, there is, uh, I mean, we are in process of putting in place a mechanism to do this, though we don't have any such loan identified, which requires restructuring at the moment. Okay, okay and secondly, uh, your individual loans, uh, how much of it, I believe most of it is sourced from your existing group loan customers, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. In the interest of time, participants are requested to limit their questions to one per participant. The next question is from the line of Rohan Mandora from Equira Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, uh, what you understand with respect to the PSLC, uh, what kind of an excess PSL would we be carrying uh, at the beginning of the next year? Any guidance on that? And second, uh, given the fact that MFI portfolio currently is behaving well, do we, do we plan to have a policy wherein we will start to build some floating provision on that? And thirdly, there are some, a few data keeping questions. If you would share the average cost of institutional and retail FDs, uh, as well as uh, the percentage of uh, group loan disbursements above, say, 1 lakh uh, at a time of disbursements. And thirdly, what is the average ticket size in a secured MSE portfolio? So, uh, I will take the first question, uh, which is uh, about the PSLC. So uh, PSLCs uh, will uh, be definitely a source of income in the coming year also, uh, but we will be able to estimate uh, the amount during the budgeting process and we will give you those numbers after Q4. Uh, so that is about PSLC. Now please repeat your other question. Sir, on the uh, on the building the floating provisions, do we have any uh, any thoughts on creating a policy on that for the group loans? Uh, so as far as microbanking book is concerned, we presently maintain a 0.5% provision on the standard asset book and uh, we plan to review the norms in due course of time as far as the standard book is concerned. But however, as I speak, uh, our cumulative provisions uh, form 1.6% of the total portfolio of OG1, so which is uh, adequate provisioning at this point in time. Okay. And average cost of, uh, uh, for institutional and retail FDs? Average cost of uh, institutional and retail FD. So, average cost of retail FDs are 8.38% uh, and institutional is in the range of 8.14%. Okay. 
ఇంటర్మ్స్ట్రాక్షన్ గోయింగ్ ఫార్వర్డ్ you know uh, vintage as the branches gain vintage their traction has been growing and that's what we have seen so as tip and we we measure we have classified branches into different categories and for each category we have a trajectory for every vintage and based on that we will continue to grow our numbers as we move into the following quarters uh, uh, into the following quarters and uh, any guidance for fi20 maybe fi19 you had given but that's just got away so when we look at it in terms of fi20 how should we see the overall uh, uh, growth as well as maybe roi roi and cost to income so for uh, long term we have already given a guidance that we will continue to grow in the range of 30 35% so that's the general guidance if there is anything specific for the next year we will update you after q4 oh, okay yeah thank you thank you participants are requested to limit their question to one per participant the next question is from the line of yazaveri from meridian capital group please go ahead yeah i just one question uh, can i get a breakdown of the mfi book in terms of urban semi urban and rural if that's possible it's uh, pretty much equally distributed among urban semi urban and rural at this moment and uh, do we do significant business in any other line in rural areas or not yet so uh, we have rural branches uh, where we uh, where we uh, began doing loans uh, and asset and deposits so we created uh, agri products that we sell through uh, the rural branches and this will expand as we go uh, as as the rural branches grow as well all right thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Deepak Padar from Safaya Capital please go ahead Yeah uh, thank you very much sir, for the opportunity so, sir uh, this is regarding um, your listing of uh, small finance bank uh, uh, so so any thought process on any kind of structure that you have in mind in terms of like uh, how much percentage we would be holding uh, as a holding company in G1 and so any kind of structuring or any any thought process on that would be helpful Well, we are working on two or three alternatives, and uh, we are going to discuss this with the RBI and SEBI, and then uh, you know, then we can get back to you once we agree on the roadmap based on their approvals. You know, uh, so right now we can't really give you any, any kind of definite response to this. Okay, okay. fair enough. Uh, no, no problem, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Maheshwari from TCG Asset Management. Please go ahead. Ah uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. I just one question that on the liquidity position and ELM. Just wanted though you have started your change in the mix towards the non MFI, but uh, if we look at the higher tenure, more than one year, your ELM gap which is there. So uh, just needed a color that how you would balance in terms of the deposit growth and the advance growth and the mix that would be taking place. on the liquidity side uh, as uh, reflected in our elm our uh, long term uh, funding is uh, more than covering our long term assets as we speak and going forward as we are building it our term deposits uh, the ratio will further go up so on the elm side we are very comfortable and the way we are building it up our non mfi book we will be able to cover up our uh, sufficient gap on to the assets and liability mismatch by way of the long term funding from term deposit as well as from pre finance but uh, what the mix would be coming means for an example right now the more than one year the if we look at the one year 
gap, uh, then the percent of total assets is coming at 33 and 48 uh, percent is the liability. Where is the appropriate mix where you would be more comfortable in a where there is no negative ALM mismatch in terms of the uh, micro, how much is the percentage and the MSC and affordables, etc. And uh, you also raised the capital, uh, just wanted to, uh, uh, when would be the, is this the sufficient capital that w has been raised and going forward, uh, the what would be the tenure or timeline where uh, no raising of capital is not further needed? I think to answer your question, capital is linked to the growth of the business. So as the business grows, we will grow, we will take more capital. So right now, at 22%, we are adequately capitalized, and as the business picks up, we will look at different opportunities. We have already mentioned that we are taking in the, uh, the uh, subordinated debt, so that will help us on the ratios as well. So that is, uh, I mean, we are constantly watching the ratios and constantly monitoring it. So as and when required, capital will be, uh, will be brought into the company. But what uh, 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 this 22 percent ratio will fulfill uh, till what timeline of the growth? Means one year, two year? Uh, just uh, needed on that, uh, depending on your 30 to 35 percent the loan growth which you have guided for. Based on our targets which we have and our uh, our uh, internal guidelines, the 22 percent. Uh, I mean, our our requirement from RBI is 15 percent. So at 22 we are plus seven. So that will take care of us for the next uh, year or year and a half. And what is the uh, right... Rahul, I'm sorry to interrupt. May we request you to come back in queue for follow-up? Thank you. The next question is from the line of MB Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Just uh, one question. Um, you, um, there's a question to Rajat um, uh, or even uh, Samit if anyone wants to take it. Just wanted to understand that uh, there's a general preference from most MFIs today to increase the average ticket size. Uh, most data points that comes from Credit Information Bureau suggest that the average ticket size is increasing at a much, much faster pace across the board. Some color as to why this is happening on the ground. Uh, and one data keeping question, if a dividend is this, if you own more than 50% of the subsidy whenever it's listed, uh, what is the DDT currently uh, applicable on it? Thanks. On DDT, I just cover DDT remains as 20.56 percent. That's the rate applicable. Even if you own more than 50. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, Mahesh, uh, average ticket sizes are going up largely because most of the banks, uh, the SFBs, and uh, have made some changes to their credit policy and allow the maximum exposure to go up to one lakh. Uh, earlier, I mean, as the MPIN, it was restricted at 60,000, and I mean, 60,000 was a norm which was almost five, seven, five, six years old. So it got reviewed, and most of the SFDs today have moved up to one lakh and giving loans to customers, uh, uh, which where t uh, ticket sizes are going up. If you look at G1's uh, disbursement, overall disbursement in micro banking has gone up by 17 and a half percent from quarter two to quarter three. But I mean, in terms of ticket size increase, is close to six, seven percent. So our growth is combination of new customer acquisition, uh, uh, serving, servicing existing repeat loan and retaining them, and some part of our growth is coming from ticket side. Our growth is also come. Our growth has also come because we have, uh, in uh, select branches, branches where we have uh, we are comfortable and there is no credit issues uh, for last one one and a half year. We have increased the overall exposure for customer up to one lakh. Thank so you. The question. Uh, thanks, Mahesh. Please come back and follow up. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kesley Opadia from Abacus. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Small clarification on a couple of comments you mentioned. Um, you mentioned our farm loan waiver impact has been low because we are more urban focused, but you also mentioned our MFI portfolio breakup between urban uh, and, and semi-urban and rural uh, are, are pretty even, equally yeah. So I was uh, talking about uh, MP in particular when I said that there our exposure is largely in urban and semi-urban area. In, uh, in Madhya Pradesh where the, we are seeing problems related to farm loan waiver in one of the branches, uh, one of the districts, there are, we don't have any major portfolio in rural area, I mean significant. But if you look at Pan-India, yes, in eastern part of country and some part of north, we have portfolio in uh, rural area as well. But in those areas, there is no problem related to farm loan waiver. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhawalgara from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, so thanks. Uh, so just one thing on uh, on the overall cost uh, ratio. So just, uh, I mean, when uh, we were uh, uh, MFI uh, um, uh, company, uh, I mean, our cost ratio used to be around uh, 6 to 6.5% uh, cost to assets I'm referring to. Uh, so, I mean, do you think that eventually in the next uh, two, three years when you uh, mention that 50 to 55% uh, cost to income ratio, you're essentially referring it to uh, around 6.5% uh, uh, cost to assets? Uh, I mean, if you could comment on uh, cost to assets, how do you see that tracking over the next two, three years? Uh, that would be useful. So, as we mentioned in the next uh, two to three years, we are expecting 50 to 55 percent as cost to income ratio, which translates into the 6 to 7 percent of the total assets. So, six and a half in the next three years is something one can expect uh, from the business? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Due to time constraints, we will take the last three questions. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Jani from Central Broking. Please go ahead. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, quickly, sir, uh, uh, just a sense on you know, the uh, sustainable credit cost uh, as we are pro progressing towards the unsecured portfolio considering uh, the larger ticket size. One. And two, how is our uh, SA per customer shaping up? I mean, what it was, what is it is now, and what, what's the target there? Thank you. Gaurav, can you repeat? Can you repeat the second question? Yeah, the saving account uh, per customer, uh, you know, what was it earlier, what is it now, and, you know, how, what's, what's our target there, you know, how do we see it shaping up in, in future for the next two, three years? So, on the savings account last quarter, if you look at the averages, it's at 6,400, and the average uh, account holding now is close to 7,800 or 7,700, 7,800, and uh, we expect that to progress, uh, uh, I mean, you know, progress the same way, and in fact, a little faster. If I look at the active accounts, our active account balances are, are close to about 11,000. And we will, you know, as, so as the accounts become more and more active, again, as the accounts become more and more vintage, they will progress towards having, holding larger balances. As also, like I said earlier, that we are doing a lot of work around our products and in the way we serve our customers. That in itself will help grow the accounts even more. And the balances. Yeah, and my second question on credit cost, please. Yeah, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, my question was, uh, ma'am, as we move towards, uh, you know, uh, larger ticket size, unsecured, uh, sorry, secured portfolio, how do we see our uh, sustainable credit costs for the next two, three years? You know, as we progressively move towards the secured portfolio, and in, compa in comparison to what it is now, the portfolio will automatically, you know, and behaviorally, become much better than what it is at the moment. That's for MSC. MSC. Okay. Any guidance on credit costs in terms of basis points? Uh, our guidance for this year remains same, which is sub-70 uh, basis points of the portfolio. In terms of next year, uh, our present guidance is in the range of 100 to 160 basis points. However, this is something, uh, this is very indicative, and uh, maybe uh, we will come back to you with the numbers uh, after Q4. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Agam Shah from Agog Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. So just a question on the CASA ratio side. So as I'm seeing, like, it's completely improving in the last three quarters, that has reached to 10%. So going ahead, so where do you see it, you know, maybe stabilizing for the, for the, for the ahead in the growth? And the second question would be, in terms of new offerings, any new offerings which are you planning to introduce maybe next uh, next year and any new hirings in that space? So, uh, in terms of new offerings, we are currently piloting uh, our uh, two-wheelers. So, that is something that we are looking to expand because that sits very well with our mass market customer. As also, personal loans that we had launched, which was completely digital, has taken a hit because of the EKYC and e-sign having gone out. We've reworked the entire thing, and we will. That's another area of expansion that we are looking at. Uh, sorry, what is your first question? So, in the CASA friend, I was asking. So, let's say when uh, majority of the private sector balance funds reaching after the CASA ratio of let's say 25 percent, the next increment alert becomes a bit difficult. So, any time or anything where you reach this target, or just uh, comments on that. Are you planning to increase your CASA ratio? So currently our CASA ratio stands at 10%. Uh, 
and uh, in next three four years uh, we expect it to be in the range of 30%. 13%. 30 percent. 13 percent. 30 three zero. 30 percent. Okay, okay. That helps. Three zero thirty. Three zero. Okay, okay. Yeah, that helps. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll take the last question from the line of Siddharth Malhotra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, so, firstly, a big uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. Ghosh and uh, Mr. David and the team uh, for um, you know taking it even through uh, you know demo and conversion to SFP. And I think from this point onwards, uh, uh, today marks a marks a special uh, special stage, really. Uh, so, so my question is to Mr. Ghosh, really. Uh, uh, Mr. Ghosh, can we expect a significant bump up in net profit from uh, the first quarter of next year? Uh, in the first quarter of next financial year? That's right. I, I, I think, I mean, we hope, I don't know, it will be much better, but uh, to what extent I think we'll be able to give you a better idea in the next call. It will okay. uh, definitely okay. be much better. But, uh, you know, we are still working our budgets and everything. And uh, by next uh, call, we should be able to give you a much better direction. Right. So, it's, it's, but it's safe, it's safe to assume that the Jeevan's best years are clearly ahead of it. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, we have, the last two years, we've basically invested in the bank in terms of physical infrastructure, the technology, and the people and the new businesses which we have started. So uh, we expect the scaling up of this business to continue, you know. Uh, I mean, to go up in the next, uh, it, it should continue over next few years. So, you know, the cost to income ratio should come down, your profitability should improve, because most of the investments are done, and now you've got to see the results from the scaling up of the business. So, so. Okay, thanks very much. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Davis for closing comments. Well, I'd like to thank uh, you know all the participants. Uh, you know, we have had a good set of questions and clarifications, and it's been a constructive discussion. So, thank you for participating, and I'd like to thank Vikas for coordinating this uh, session, and to the Access Capital team for making it possible. So thank you, and goodbye.